Hey guys, today we're making homemade s'mores Pop-Tarts. This is a childhood favorite of mine and I'm gonna show you exactly how you can make it from scratch in your own kitchen. They're a thousand times better than the store-bought kind and you're gonna have so much fun making them. So if you'd like to learn how to make homemade s'mores Pop-Tarts, then just keep watching. To get started with the dough for these homemade Pop-Tarts, we're combining flour, graham cracker crumbs, salt with two sticks of cubed ultra cold butter. This is actually a graham cracker pastry and it's what's going to give our Pop-Tarts that distinctive s'mores flavor. So we wanna pulse the flour mixture with the butter until it resembles coarse meal. Then we're going to add in an egg and two tablespoons of ice water. And you may need to add more water depending on how your dough comes together. And I'm doing this all in my food processor because it makes quick and easy work out of this dough, but you can totally do it by hand with a pastry blender if you need to. So I've just processed just until the dough holds together when I pinch it between my fingers. And now it's ready to be shaped into a disc and chilled in the fridge for about um, an hour or so or until it's nice and firmed and chilled. You can actually store the dough in the fridge for up to three days or freeze it for up to about two months if you'd like to make the, the dough and the Pop-Tarts ahead of time. So it's going to go off into the fridge and while that is chilling, I'm actually gonna get started on the fudge s'mores filling. So these s'mores Pop-Tarts are going to be filled with half chocolate fudge, half marshmallow cream. So for my chocolate fudge filling, I have two tablespoons of unsweetened cocoa powder, and this is all going to get cooked on the stove top after we combine all the ingredients. Two tablespoons of brown sugar, a pinch of salt, a teaspoon of vanilla extract, third a cup of milk, and you can use any type of milk you like, and three ounces of milk chocolate. I'm gonna give it a quick stir before heading over to my stove. So I'm gonna set the pan over medium heat and cook, stirring until the chocolate is all melted. Then add one tablespoon of unsalted butter, remove from heat and let cool, and it'll thicken and turn into like a nice fudgy mixture as it cools. Next, I'm taking my chilled pastry dough and rolling it out into a big rectangle, an eighth of an inch thick. And I'm actually using this little Pop-Tart cutter that I got from Sur La Table, it's by Wilton, to cut out perfect rectangles for my dough. But you can use a cookie cutter or a knife or a pastry cutter to cut out these rectangles here. So once my rectangles are all cut out, I'm going to fill them with a tablespoon or so of the chocolate fudge mixture, and as you can see it's nice and thick, and a tablespoon of jarred marshmallow cream. We want to make sure to leave a border around the edge so that we can use it to seal the other rectangle half and create a nice closed tart and make sure that the filling doesn't come out of the edges because the marshmallow will actually puff up as it's being cooked in the oven and we want to make sure that it doesn't explode or anything like that. So I've just pressed the dough down to seal the edges and I'm crimping with a fork for a kind of decorative touch. This is going to go into the fridge to be chilled until firm, but first I'm going to brush all over with egg wash and then prick each tart a few times with a skewer or a toothpick to let steam escape while it's baking. And while the Pop-Tarts bake at 375 degrees for 20 minutes, I just made my chocolate glaze with milk, chocolate, butter, and corn syrup all melted together. And I'm brushing this all over my baked Pop-Tarts, let them set for about 10 minutes, and they're ready to serve. All right guys, so my homemade Pop-Tarts have just been freshly glazed with the chocolate coating and they look amazing. These homemade s'mores Pop-Tarts are a thousand times better than the store-bought kind and it's such a fun recipe. If you guys do like copycat recipes, make sure to check out all the other copycat videos I have posted. There's tons of good stuff there for you to learn how to make at home. I'd love to hear from you guys of what you'd like to see next time, so leave me a comment below with any recipe requests and I'll make that happen for you. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time with another food video.